Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. Micro wind turbines, are they worth it? Now, that's a matter of opinion, um, but I can give you real life situations here. I have a micro wind turbine up here. Um, my home is 100% off grid, uh, so it's solar powered and wind turbine powered, right? Uh, let me take you guys into the power shed real quick. I wanna go over some things about micro wind turbines. Oh, it's always a mess in here. I keep cleaning it up and it keeps getting packed back in here. So um, here is my off-grid system, everyone. Uh, this is, I have Tesla batteries, which basically they're lithium-ion batteries to 18650s, basically. But they are the, the, the modules, right, in a sense. Uh, and then we have the charge controllers to our right. And as we work across here, we have the DC breakers, then we have the inverters, and then we have... Um, the high voltage um, AC coming out, right? Uh, I'm gonna make another video on how this all works and how it's all connected, kind of more of a brief description of how it works. Um, but today's video, we're talking about micro wind turbines, right? So this over here, this charge controller over here on the right, um, the Midnight Solar, um, two, this is the 200 model charge controller, okay? Now, this charge controller can do solar, wind, and hydro. So I actually have it set up to do wind. Okay, because I have these other charge controllers here. I'm um, actually only this one going because I have a lot of solar, so I don't even need to run this one. But anyway, let's get back to the wind turbines here. So I am utilizing an MPPT charge controller to maximize the, um, the maximum amount of power I can get from my wind turbine. Okay, now that's also justified by the wind, the wind speed. That is, you know, spinning the hub, spinning the rotor, and creating that, that power or energy. So um, let me kind of walk you guys through how this works, and then let's talk a little bit more on um, is it worth it, okay? So let's go back outside real quick. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, it is windy. So we have the wind turbine here, okay? It's catching all the wind that's coming to it. It comes down the line. Sorry, it's windy, guys. It comes down the line, right? It's a, a three-phase. Sorry guys, it's windy. Let me kind of get behind the the shed over here. Okay, so the wind turbine over here, right? It's catching all that wind. And she's spinning away, guys. It, in real life, it is going so fast I can't see the blades. But um, we have a wild three-phase AC um, coming down the pole. It comes down, and it basically comes underneath my power shed, and it comes up into the power shed, okay? Now, when it comes up into the power shed, we have um, this kind of lighter gray pipe this other one here is for my solar this one is for my actual um wind turbine so it comes up and it hits a bridge rectifier right there okay so it takes the wild three phase ac and it um basically brings it down to a usable dc voltage okay now the dc voltage will be high on a just like a um solar panel um the open voc on it is a lot higher than when you actually connect it to a battery right well, think about the wind turbine in that sense, but except the voltage is way, way higher, okay? Now, once it hits the bridge rectifier, it basically combines it and makes it where you have a usable positive and negative coming off of it now, right? That big metal plate or um, it's an old inverter, I convert it to a heat sink, okay? Because the bridge rectifier is converting that wild three-phase AC. So that block will get hot or warm depending on how much power is being produced, right? And how much that has to work. So that heat seat does a really great job. It keeps it really nice and actually cold. So it never gets hot. So that's great news. Or it gets a little warm when it's really pumping out like say, you know, 1600 watts of um, power from the wind turbine. It'll get a little warm, but nothing major. Then from there, um, the, those two black, I mean, sorry, the red and black wires right there come in and go into the charge controller. The charge controller, all these type of charge controllers allows you to basically bring in a higher voltage and then basically the charge controller will um, condition that or step it down in order to um, charge your battery bank correctly. So I have a 60 volt battery bank here, right? Lithium ion. Now, um, so what I do is I, all I have to do is set up those parameters. In any of these type of charge controllers, you can go in and set those settings up. You know, you can say, um, you know, exorb at a certain voltage, uh, float at a certain voltage, cut off at a certain voltage. You know, there's so many um, aspects to that. I have videos covering how to actually program a lot of that. So definitely check out my other videos, guys. So we have a higher voltage coming in. 
um, the charge controller takes it, steps it down in order to charge the batteries correctly. But it also conditions it and tries to get the most power at that current moment out of that um, whatever you have plugged into it, like solar panels or wind turbines. In my case, a wind turbine, right? Um, so if I get up close to the screen here and kind of show you guys, this is what's happening right now. Okay, we are off grid. Remember this. We don't have no grid anywhere near us. So um, we're at 500, 600. That's watts, right? So to the left, you have volts, right? So volts times amps equals watts. So this is what's coming in right now. 500. So I've seen this wind turbine do um, six, 16, I'm sorry, yeah, um, 1,600 watts. Um, I know she'll do more. I just need more wind, right? Okay, so um, now after it's being conditioned and everything, it comes back down the line and goes straight to the battery to charge the battery. So this is regulating the incoming voltage, the outgoing voltage, the amperage, and it's trying to maximize all of that. That's what the charge controller is doing, right? With some caveats, with um, depending on how you set it up, you can set those parameters at different set points, right? So this is kind of my sweet spot for this type of, for my wind turbine, and it works really well, okay? Now let me take you guys in the house. So what I have here is my display for my charge controller, okay? Um, this is communicating with the charge controller that I was just showing you guys. So this gives us a more um, fancy over, overview, um, but basically it was showing us the same thing that was happening on the display at the charge controller. Now, um, when it comes down to is it worth it? So as you guys can see, I'm you know I'm producing some pretty decent power um, from the wind turbine, right? Um, let's go to energy. So today I've already produced 3.0 kilowatt hours so far today already. Okay, let's go to the daily log calendar okay so this is for december and this is basically giving us the overview of what's kind of been happening day by day with power so if we start at the first over here as you guys can see there was actually no wind on the first okay so no power came in then on the second we had 0 0.3 kilowatt hours come in right and now we start going down we have 0 0.8 and I was at float, so you see float. Now that's because um, the I have solar and wind, right? So the solar is the workhorse mostly, right? The wind turbine is a like a boost. It really is a boost. Um, it helps carry you over through the nighttime periods when it's dark, um, but it also helps like during the day when you don't have that much solar and the wind is kicking up and you know producing some decent power. It'll help keep get get those batteries up to where they need to go. But on this day, especially. Um, where you see float and float, um, the solar basically, you know, charges us up early and it was basically floating. So it was regulating the amount of power that was actually coming in from the charge controller. So even if I had a thousand watts of power coming in at that moment, it was actually tapering it down because I don't need to overcharge my batteries, right? So that's what the charge controller is doing, right? Helping us to maintain where everything needs to be. Then on the fourth day, we had, if it, my camera will focus, we had 1.0 kilowatt hours. Uh, and then on the 5th, we had zero wind. On the 6th, we had 1.8 kilowatt hours. And we, now we're going to start building up. Okay, so now 7, on the 7th, 1.9, so that's almost 2 kilowatt hours. On the 8th, we almost had 4, 3.8 kilowatt hours. Right? Now we go to the 9th. Now we're at 4 point, I mean, yeah, 4.2 kilowatt hours. On the 10th, we had 6.8. Nine kilowatt hours. That's almost seven kilowatt hours already just for that one day, right? Then the winds died down a little bit and we had 2.2 .2 kilowatt hours, 2.2 .2 kilowatt hours, 7.1, 5.8, and here we are today. Okay, so today, let's go back. So today we're already at 3.0 kilowatt hours. It's still early in the day, so she'll climb up. And the winds are, you know, picking up a little bit here. So um, let's go back here. Load. Um, they hit six point something, maybe seven kilowatt hours today for this day here. Somewhere around there, depending on the winds, right? So now um, that kind of gives you guys an overview of the month, right? We're not done with the month yet. But it kind of gives you an overview of what's happening here where I live with my wind turbine off-grid. Okay? So let's go back. 
So having this extra power to pump into the batteries is a, a huge um, plus, let me tell you. So in my opinion, micro wind turbines, are they worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the more charging sources you can have for your, especially if you're really living off grid guys and you know, you're trying to keep your batteries healthy and fully charged or wherever you want to keep them, you know, more, the more charging sources you have from renewable energy, um, the better off you're really going to be, you know? Um, so to me, micro wind turbines are absolutely worth it. Now, let's assume I didn't have winds where I live. Would it be worth it? Now that would be the the main question for for a lot of you that don't have wind is it worth it in your area so i always like to tell people that you know um because i i'm kind of spoiled i have a lot of wind i have a lot of sun um you know i live in hawaii so it's tropical weather all the time um so it's not like i have to worry about winter snowing any of that right this is kind of a daily occurrence right here this is daily right nothing really changes which is nice it's stable to a certain degree now, for a lot of you that, um, you know, live in the winter areas, then, you know, you guys have to worry about enough sun coming in for your solar. Well, think about it like the wind turbine. If you guys live in certain areas and you guys don't have enough sustainable winds or average wind speeds um, that can justify the wind turbine, then it might not make sense for you, right? Because you do have to have wind in order to produce the power from the wind turbine, right? So if you only get a breeze from time to time, it may not be beneficial. If you get very low wind speeds all the time, this may not, wind turbines may not be the best, um, you know, um, option for you. So um, these are the things that you have to think about. In, in a broad term, they are absolutely worth it. Just like solar is worth it, wind turbines are worth it, hydropower is worth it, they're all worth it, absolutely. But depending on where you live and how much power you need and, you know, the environment around you will justify you know, what you can use more of. So if you didn't have a lot of wind in your area, then you may have to double up on solar power or run a hydro system of some sort, right? Now, if you have a lot of wind like I do in my area, right, um, then it makes sense for me to run solar and wind. You know, here's my batteries, 60.1. They're fully charged, okay? I have stuff on, right, in the house. It, like, my batteries are just chilling, you know? Um, now, during the nighttime... It, that's where the wind turbine really starts to perform because you have no sun power coming in from the solar panels, right? So basically, imagine this at nighttime because this is what happens at nighttime. This is like same – what I get right now is what I get during the night, right? You know, of course, the winds pick up or go down accordingly. Um, but yeah, it's – you know, I'm getting an extra, you know um, – where's my chart? Here we go. Let's go back. So look, I had seven – seven kilowatt hours here roughly 7.1 here 5.8 here those are big pretty decent numbers for a wind turbine right? so um something to think about guys i think they're worth it you may want to weigh the options out for you do your research for your area find out what type of wind speeds you get you know i did a lot of testing before i even put my wind turbine up but i already knew i had a lot of wind so it's just you know the area i live in I mean, I've seen this wind turbine, like, keep in mind, guys, when it hits 500, the dial changes automatic to 1,000. Then when it hits 1,000, the dial automatically changes to 1,500 and keeps going up, okay? So if we pass 500 right there, see, it just changed to 1,000. So we're at 900, 33 watts. So I'm glad I caught that on, on video for you guys because once it hits over 1,000, it'll change to 1,500. So like I said, I've seen this wind turbine do over 1,600 watts, no problem. And I know she'll do way more. If I had to guess, she could probably do upwards of, if I've seen her do 1,600 with no problem, 16, two. honestly, I think she could do 3,000 watts. Um, when we start getting some heavier winds, I know she can do easily 3,000. Um, I know she can do 2,000, no problem. So, um, yeah, just want to show you guys that. So I hope that's educational, guys. If you guys have any comments, leave a comment. I'll do my best to get back to everyone. But do your research. That's where it all comes down to. Now, there's also a lot of wind turbines out there in the market, of course, and a lot of different companies and brands and, you know, technologies and stuff. And, you know, I'll be honest. I don't know all those technologies and all that, right? I'm not a manufacturer. All I can do is contest to the equipment that I am using in a real-life situation on my daily off-grid home that I live in. I depend on this power. I depend on my solar power. I depend on my batteries to live. I need lights at night. I need my, you know, my home to be able to run.
to live comfortably. So absolutely worth it to me. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys on the next one.